and do now. Okay, so uh, let's just play through our drum calls and up to those that are ready. Before we play each piece, just yell out all the things that you're thinking of for this piece. Yeah? So uh, we'll just do our variations first. Okay, so I'll give the introduction. I do recognise that this is a much more musical introduction. But what they listen to on the CD is, or recording, is A, E, F, sharp, E. Uh, so I personally think that that's what we should be giving them as the introduction. And the reason Dr. Suzuki chose that is because it's a reminder of what they're going to play. Mm. Whereas 3 to 1A doesn't help them remember how the beginning of Twinkle goes. I don't think that they really need reminding, but you know, I've been told so many times for doing the scale version that I am now like uh, pro the official version. So here we go. Even maybe a little bit more. <laughs> okay, so we are extending the bows 
but still stopping. They haven't learned staccato, um, legato longer bows yet. So it's a very unmusical way and it doesn't sound like the song, but it's what the four year olds can do. So that's how you're going to teach it to them to start off with. And then as they approach playing, like go tell it really long, long ago, then they will automatically start to legato wise. <laughs> They're bowing. Uh, and if they don't, then you can teach it. Yeah, but most of them don't need to be told, they'll just do it automatically. So, um, can, can you just bring your little finger closer to the reed? That's it, yeah. Fantastic. 
Like, there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. But the thing is that it's difficult. And at this stage for me, they've spent probably at least a year playing Twinkles. They're so desperate to play another piece. I just want them to get through it. So, <laughs> so you teach them to put each finger down separately? Um, so if we're going to do very slow motion, I'm just going to go to the camera so that they can see this as well. Let's just wake it up. Um, so we would make sure that they're playing, sorry, terrible posture so you can see my fingers. So if they're playing independent two, then they add the three, they wouldn't swap it. And then they swap those for the one, and that's like a walking finger. So they okay. make sure the one is down ahead of time. And then obviously up the scale, you just leave them on. So for basically their whole lives, as you're going from a lower finger, adding a higher finger, you want them to add on, not swap up. Like independent fingers going upwards is not that something that we ever really want. Okay. Yeah, it's going down that you don't want that block, especially once they're in different finger patterns and then they just you just get this all the time. Okay. So very slow motion would be two by itself for me. Add the three, swap to the one, but make sure the one is down before the two and three come up. using that same, oh let's play low for everyone. <laughs> so it's up to you if you want to put one and two down, or just two every time you play two, that's completely your choice. So, and make sure when you do the introduction that you need to start the tip, otherwise you have a retake, which isn't in the piece and the kids don't understand it. balance point but into the middle of the upper half And also they're still not doing legato, legato, so something like So if you were to like do it on slow-mo, there's your three quarter and quarter points. You probably have the the first set of crotchets up to about here. Okay. And then you go to there, which means the second set of crotchets would go to about there and then back. Okay. So it's not like 
But, you know, I can't be dealing with millimetres of specificity on how much breath they're using. Does it sound good? This is the thing that we want to keep coming back to all the time. How's the sound? Are they enjoying themselves? Are they making good progress in terms of what is appropriate for them? Um, you know, and obviously the amount of progress they're making is 99% to do with how much practice they're doing, so. Okay. I'm oh, sorry, I didn't realise that had been moved there. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> so so we've got their like, free to, sure. no, I could probably move it. Yeah, no, actually, if you move that over. Great. Thank you. Okay. So, Song of the Wind, the preview box, I think we've talked about this before, haven't we? Of this. Yeah. Yeah, that you would teach that. Bex, would you like to show us how you would teach that? Uh, so I'll fill you with horror. <laughs> um, I'm not sure I've done this yet. Okay. Um, so you'll be holding the first finger down. Yeah, excellent. Um, and hop the three from... Brilliant. Yeah, so that's exactly what you're doing. It's exactly the first step that you would do with the kid. Can you, with no bow, no sound, yeah. can you practice hopping your three, keeping your one down? Some of them will need to practice that for a whole week. Others of them will just be able to do it, and it's just about, you know, what their motor neurone skills are like, how much they're paying attention, what other kind of things similar they've done before. So then the next step, which would be useful, and you can do this while they're polishing lightly, we're ready for a credit. This, this stuff we're talking about now, yeah. the preview stuff, um, is putting the one on, and then busy, busy, stop, stop, just on the three. Hop and drop. Hop and drop. Hop and drop. It's not really drop, going to the A. Hop and tip. <laughs> Hop and drop. So that's a good thing to do over, well, the next week ideally would be to separate out where you're putting your notes and your um, um, I'm just doing it pieces. here as a quick reference, um, but I've got a notepad with more detail. But do you have them photocopied like this? And I've out. got like a separate book so that I can... You need them separated so yeah. that when so when you when you put them we'll talk more about um, written work at lunchtime but yeah. when you give in your written work yeah they expect to see the photocopied on one side and yeah. then the notes on the other so, so I think I, it's I, useful to do this earlier rather than yeah. later because otherwise okay. you'll have a whole load of catching up of transferring from the book that you've been scribbling in okay. into that whereas like if you do it now from you know as you go along then it's basically ready and you can just sort of meet now okay um okay so. Um, Kit, would you mind taking a little video? I know we're videoing this, but so that I don't have to cut it up. Um, the, the preview steps. Thank you very much. So the previews, yeah, we're recording. The preview steps for the box in Song of the Wind is first of all, so with a no bow, just making sure the child can keep the one down and tap the three on the E and then the A. And then some of them will need a whole week on that, and some of them will just be able to do it. And then the next step would be to play busy, busy, stop, stop on those notes. So hop and drop, hop and tip, hop and drop, hop and tip. And really the only thing that often goes wrong in that is the one coming off. So that's what you've got to watch for, and the intonation. And then you play the whole box with um, busy, busy, stop, stop on each note except the E. the retake there you know if you've got a child who's really struggling obviously you can break it down and just do the four notes and then an E and not worry about the retake and teach it separately but hopefully most of them will be able to do that as their box straight away and then once they've got that really under control and that's the box and hopefully if you time it right at about the same time as they get their credit for lightly row they'll be able to play that box which means that the rest of twinkle um sorry the rest of some of the wind is super simple thank you 
Um, so this is the first time they've had different... Have you not had this level of notes when you've had Helen? No, she talks about Lightly Road, but it was sort of mainly games and okay. she was sort of talking about how you can use it for a double stop exercise, how you can use it for a fourth thing. Okay. So, so all stuff that you would do, later on. but yeah, yeah. much okay. more helpful for later on. But no worries. Initially. Okay, so the first, so Song of the Wind is one of the mountain pieces, partly because, What's the like the hard pieces. So I just talk about mountain pieces as every so often you're going to get to a piece that's going to take longer than the others, it's going to have more tricky stuff in it, and um, that means you can feel even more proud of yourself when you get your credit for it. Um, and the philosophy behind that, which is useful to share with the parents, is that Dr. Suzuki was the first person, pedagogue, who realised that if you learn like this, overall you will learn a lot more steeper gradient and also have a much nicer time because you really struggle with something and then you have this, oh, like this is easy now and this is easy now and then you have a struggle and then you have some easiness rather than like the grade system which is like everything's the same level so you spend the year learning grade one and then you have a big step up and you spend a year struggling with grade two and just as you get to grade two like competence then you just start struggling again with grade three. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a lot more pleasant um, and so that's why Lightly Row is fairly easy. Song of the Wind is quite hard. Go to Talent Radio is fairly easy. O Come Little Children is one of the two hardest pieces in the book. O Come Little Children and Etude are, and Glossek are the really tough ones in the book from nearly everybody. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, so that pattern sort of continues. Um, so we've got that complex string crossing, keeping a finger down while you're hopping a three, and different, the first introduction of retakes and also different size retakes <coughs> all in one piece so hopefully they will be doing a group where they would be in with children who can already play this piece so they'd be practicing just the retakes in the group lesson have you seen that or talked about it okay um, so if you grab your violin kit will be yeah you can be my um pre-twinklers and i will be the teacher and also Pretending that there's another group. Well, why don't Bex? Why don't you play the whole piece? Okay. So you're on like maybe go to my roadie. So lucky. Uh, and Kate, you're just on lightly row, and I'm the teacher. So what we're going to do is uh, let's check that we've got. You know, you would do all of this. We're not going to do it now because we need to keep going. But check that everybody's well set up. Okay, and then let's practice just the retakes. So in Lord, in um, Song of the Wind, we've got big retakes on E and A. So you, my turn, your turn, my turn. <coughs> Ready? Your turn. Very good. And then we're going to tip to A. My turn. Ready? Play. Excellent. And then on the E string we've got a tiny baby one. Ready? Go. Excellent. So when I give you the lead, you're going to do the retakes. And it's long on E, long on E, short on E, long on A. And you know how to play this piece already, so you're going to play your fingers with me. Okay? Yeah. So you don't play anything except those retakes, Ken. in your private lesson even if you know that they've done it in group two just to check that their retakes are good that they understand the different sizes and different notes of the retakes and when you do retakes 
you want them to understand that the circles are in the elbow and in the hand and in the tip and they're all making different sizes of the same circle so you want to watch out for this and you can talk to them now now you're making a massive you know sausage with your tip we don't want that we want everything to draw a perfect circle so what was the circle thing you so the hand things. the elbow and the tip draw the same shape circles even though they're different sizes Okay, any questions about some of the wind? Mm. <coughs> you always you always end the boat on the string still or not yet? Well or for me, because they're doing retakes in this piece, I'm not super fussy about whether they stay on at the end or not. I think, you know, if you've got children who can't stay on at the tip without making a horrible sound, then yes, you would probably keep them on so that they can practice that. Mm -hmm. But if it's sounding nice, and also, you know, it's practicalities. If you've got 15 kids in a group, you're not going to really, at this age and stage, you're not going to really have the capacity to be, well, you can. <laughs> Whether you want to spend the amount of effort making sure that every child is staying on at the end, I would rather make, it, make sure that every child's doing the right size retakes and that the finger three is landing on the tape so that it's in tune, for example. Um, but it's a kind of combination of, of, you know, yeah, that's a flexible piece. Are you doing, um, sorry, are you doing walking fingers on the... Yeah. Walking yeah. fingers? Yeah. So I never block the fingers going down after the twinkles. I think that would be correct to say. <laughs> I'll keep thinking about that as we go through the pieces. Is there a point where we would block? I just, I don't think there is. All right. Go to Aunt Rudy. Let's just play it first. Well, let's just talk about what's in it. Give me one thing, Bex, that Go to Aunt Rudy's there for. What's a teaching point mm. of it? Have you got the notes from my book in your book? Um, I don't think so, no. Okay, so it would be handy to copy in. Um, you took photos last week, didn't you? I think yeah. so, yeah. yeah. Sorry, I'll so you want to copy in, basically the, book, the boxes at the top of each piece are your main teaching points. It says etc. Is that just the same as Song of the Wind or? Hang on, where? The box that you just gave two and then Oh, Jerry, go tell, teach, oh, come, song, then add bowing in the air, etc. Okay, so. Um, so I wasn't sure what credit boxes otherwise to put down. Oh, okay, yeah, I think it is for boxes. So it just means, you know, if you've got a child who's like, obviously you're going to teach intonation, good intonation. Um, if you've got a child whose bow isn't straight, you would put straight bow as a box for them. Like, if you put every single thing that they're going to need to do right, it's completely overwhelming. So you put the things that are um, specific to the piece. So the echo is the main new thing in this piece. Okay. First time we've got dynamics. Um, Tone, I've just put there because I always want to be thinking about a tone. I probably should have written intonation as well for the same reason. Um, is that a different box, intonation? Or box? Yeah, yeah. And then it's literally just what the child is working on in their general technique. Right. Um, you've got three different speeds of bow, so you've got bow, crotchets, and minims. Yep. Yeah. Yep, so you could just put bow speed. But I mean, mostly the tone will, you know. Again, if you're teaching to whether it sounds good and looks comfy, you will not teach the wrong bowing <laughs> because it won't sound good. So those four are the main ones, and then if the child you think needs a bit more work or something else, you just add an extra. Yeah. So if they have, um, you know, a dodgy bow hold, then you would put bow hold so that you yeah. remind them each time that they need to think about making a good bow hold and keeping the good bow hold all the way through. Um, same with violin posture. Same with you know if they stand like this, <laughs> all of those types of things. Okay. So really, the dynamics is the main thing at this stage. How are they going to play quieter? Smaller and less bow. Exactly, yeah. Um, you're not really thinking about lighter. 
You're definitely not changing the balance point at this, um, sorry, the contact point at this level. Mostly you're just thinking um, bigger bows and smaller bows. And where's the bow kind of situated? Uh, it's point. that middle half again from the balance point up to halfway through the uh, halfway up the upper half. Let's check the microphone. Okay, so let's play. So, is it is your um, very lovely and voluminous hood a bit in the way? A little bit. Uh, but it's okay because I don't want to take off to the cold. Okay, yeah, no, fair enough. Just try and make sure that it's. Yeah. Yeah, that you can keep your head tall as well. Okay, and best bow holds. Beautiful. Good. Just, yeah, bring your little finger a bit closer to three. It keeps it bent more easily. Mm -hmm. And nice soft knees. Great. So, for example, if they were to come off there, you're not practicing, like, basically this is the posture that they need for starting to play. Any rests at the heel, um, you know, like loads of different uh, times when they're doing violin, they need to be able to stand like this. So this is another time when you practice coming at it from having finished. Um, whereas if you just take them off, they're just kind of losing that control. Okay, happy? Yep. Good, next. <laughs> the delight. Right, so who can tell me what, uh, first of all, what are you gonna teach for a comedy of children during Go Tell Them Roadie? Starting on an up bow. Great. Starting in the middle of the bow. Excellent. Um, so show me what that would look like so far. What would they actually be able to do now? Uh, so starting from, oh, also bow distribution. So you're going to be sort of finishing halfway down so that you can do another up bow. Yeah. So up, ups. Exactly. So this is definitely the slowest bow they've done. If you think that you want in a slow tempo a whole crotchet, finishing at the middle, that's slower than even the minims that they've done so far, isn't it? So is this more kind of in the upper half of this song or not really? It's the same parts of the bow. You uh -huh. might go a bit higher, uh -huh. um, but mostly it's the same that like half from the balance point to the upper half. But what I mean is when they play this, let's play it and then it will make a bit more sense. Okay, so find yourself in the middle.
the middle because they've got into the habit of doing those double ups. Good, okay, so let's sit down for a minute because there's lots in this. Um, so you kind of want them to stop in the middle yeah, and then do the upward to the balance point. Yeah. So in terms of preview during Go Talent Roadie, we're definitely practicing, okay, land in the middle and play up down. That is going to be enough for some of them for a week. Just that while they're doing Go Talent Roadie. What else do we want them to do during Go Talent Roadie? And they'll do the up up, so starting at the tip of the bow up. I wouldn't teach them that yet. Okay. It's a very good idea, but it's so um, out of context for them because they've not played the piece yet that they don't understand. Um, I think doing this, doing a song is a much better way to do it to start off with. Mm -hmm. So bowing in the air, practicing, it gets them practicing up, down, bend down. Have we got this song? Well, it's on yes. my YouTube channel. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <coughs> so, up, down, then down, up is the right way to bow. Makes them practice the slow bow. Up, down, once again, then you make the bow slow. Up, bows, etc. So, they're practicing that slow bow and then up again, but without having to negotiate with the instrument. Is that just to know the rhythm kind of thing? Is that what it is? Or? To know the tune, to know the rhythm, to practice that slow bow and then following up bow, and also to make sure that they don't play up, down, up, up, down, up, up, down, which probably you will spend much of your career wishing Dr. Suzuki had done because it would teach the same thing and be so much easier. <laughs> Okay, so my approach to song to Okamoto children is yeah that you are if you haven't already added tapes for the you've got the balance point to the middle definitely because you're going to put those on before the twinkles. Bless you. I'm sorry. <laughs> you will probably put the upper half sticker on in either twinkle theme, like the Rogo, Talent Roly, whatever, but if you just happen to realise that you haven't yet, you definitely want the top one on for this piece. So you wouldn't put all three at the very beginning? Lots of people do, yeah, I do, oh. but just in case, like, it's just a check. Yeah. Have you got the three tapes on? Oh. Yeah? Um, and <coughs> so, uh, so I teach the up-downs on E separated from the rest of the piece. The, twink, the O Come Little Children song in the air, totally away from the instrument. And then it depends on how quick the child is, whether we do the, um, whether we do this. Some of the kids who get confused by that can just put the twos in, so they just come and they can just play the first line. So what's more usual for me, but it's obviously personal choice, not obviously, it is personal choice, is teaching the first line without the second up bow, the last up bow, and they do that as a box, and I will say to the parent, once they've got their fingers around it, can you see if they can finish the last... Um, in the middle and join it together. Can you join it together? So it's sort of like you sneak in being able to play the first two lines without them really realising. Um, and some of them can and some of them can't and if they can't do that they just learn the box as it is and then the parent will just help them reset the bow in the middle to do it a second time and a third time and a fourth time and then you teach them that as a second stage. So with all of these skills, it's like you have to be clear what is the development of the skills, like the pre-twinkle steps, 
What is the order in which you're teaching the skills? Some children will be able to do three skills at once, and other children will need half a step, then half a step, then half a step, then half a step. So as long as you're clear on what the order is, you can tailor what you're teaching so that they understand, um, you know, so that they can get full um, understanding and competence on each step. So can you just figure out a certain order you're going to teach every child, or does it have to change between each child? Um, I think that it's the same order for every child. It's just some of them will be able to skip out some of the um, stages. Oh yeah, that'd be great. Mm -hmm. Oh lovely. Yeah, if you could, that'd be yeah. great. Thanks. And then I'm gonna be adding um into the the allegretto you saw on um Thanks. These I'll be adding that as well. You didn't okay. even yet when the doorbell went so much. Yeah, if you could. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Okay. So um then I give them the last line to learn with the upbeat, obviously, because this is the trickiest for the fingers. Especially that part. They just find it difficult. Is that because it's walking and blocking or whatever the other one's I think it's partly going from E3, it's the first time they've had E3 by itself, rather than like built up to. Um, I think it's just like lots of them will know the tune, but if you actually kind of were able to look inside their heads, they would be a bit hazy on what happens there. <laughs> um, so I think they don't quite often know what they're listening for, what they're trying to find. Um, and then it's just, yeah, that, that, that sort of like finger gymnastics of, you know, going from a three by itself to a two by itself, adding a three, going back to the one and then to the A. Um, <clears throat> And you'd finish on the string. Yeah. Yep. Definitely. So by the time they've done all of that, obviously their finish goes on that ready by now. Not finished. Got their credit for. Um, never finished, right? Uh, and they will then have no problem at all adding the third line in because it's super easy. I don't know how popular this would be with the other trainers that I work with, but I'm going to put my neck on the line and say I sometimes do teach this with just a fingers credit so that they can play the tune and they haven't done the bowing and then we'll come back to it and put the bowing in review because otherwise you can if you if you're looking at a situation where you're going to have a child on one piece for more than six weeks this is just depressing for everybody mm -hmm. um, and I personally think that motivation and the incentive to keep learning is much more important than whether they learn up, up at this stage or up up you know, in two months' time, or even six months' time. So, like, with Hal, for, at the moment, um, he got his fingers credit in, like, late September, maybe, and then he got his, um, the full credit, like, two weeks ago. And so now he can play the whole thing with the bowing and the fingers correctly, but he's also learned long, long ago anime song and half of a leg row during that time, whereas I'm sure it would be the same amount of time if I just kept on trying to get him to get it right. So finger credits, are you just playing the whole piece, but not actually, not with the bow, just putting all your... Fingers. No, with the bow, but just the wrong bow. Oh, so a fingers credit would be... Especially for this piece because it's so hard. Okay. Are you posting this on your YouTube channel? Or um, yeah, I think I probably will. Okay. It will definitely be available to you. Okay. If not, I'll put it on the Dropbox. Are you accessing the Dropbox? Do you have? Did, was it you who was saying? No, it was Freya who was saying. She wasn't sure about it. Do you look at it? Have you used it? I've used it, but yeah, I get help me sort of get it on my phone. So. I used it to get the twinkle thing, but I was like, but you can access it. Is maybe yeah. I'm answering the door? No, I think it's not. I asked her specially. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks so much for sending me those. That's going to be really helpful. Yeah. 
Oh. Have you been doing them in your lessons with Kate? Oh, uh, we can try and start it today. Yeah, the 10 minutes I left, I think. Yeah. Got to try and hold it up. Thanks. Okay. Any more questions about the delights that is O'Connor little children? And this, this has got echo in it as well, doesn't it? Because it's got the piano as well, or, or not really. Um, I would definitely recommend you put that in, in review. Like, by the time they're in the second half of book one. And not a credit. Not for a credit. Oh. Um, go turn up ready. The reason that you're going to look for the echo as a credit is that it's so easy. Um, but also, I've had students who haven't found it so easy and therefore they would get a credit for just playing that so the whole way through. Mm -hmm. And then in review we put in the dynamics. I mean, for me personally, I think it's quite a good rule of thumb that dynamics is something that goes in in review. Um, you know, if you're, like later on, if you're thinking about something like Bach Bore at the end of book three, if you're going to get them to learn all of those dynamics before they even get a single first credit, that's a re it's just going to take a really long time and they're going to feel frustrated, mm -hmm. and you're going to feel frustrated. Whereas if they you know, are doing it in review for their graduation recording, easy peasy, they already know all of the notes and then they can focus on the dynamics as the next stage. I don't understand this review part thing. So once you've got your credit for a piece, uh -huh. it becomes a review. Oh, so it just, so it just means old pieces. Uh -huh. So the, the whole philosophy of review within the Suzuki world is that it's different from most music teaching, where most music teaching, once you can play a piece beautifully, you never play it again. Mm -hmm. You move on to another piece and then you forget it. Um, which is completely different from what happens in the professional music performance world, isn't it? Like Hilary Hahn didn't learn Tchaikovsky violin concerto once and then never play it again. <laughs> like, they all, all the soloists have a huge, you know, um, repertoire of pieces that they keep ready for a performance at any moment. Um, so it's the idea that the old pieces are where you refine your musical skills, where you can work on posture, where you can work on um, dynamics, phrasing, Just making more, more beautiful really sounds, fast. playing more in tune, all of those things, because they're not thinking about what note is it next, what finger is it, which bow is it, the kind of mechanics of it. Okay, I think let's just talk about page 30. I have written at the top of the page, do not ignore this page. Oh, <laughs> which seems like it may have happened. Okay, so I have to say, I teach tone all the time. So I tend not to use this open string study that much, but I think it's a useful reminder that you're literally just listening for the resonance, oh sorry, of each string. Can you hear the ringing sound? Okay, and then you would play. Can you make it sound like as beautiful? So that if you've got a child that's not does not have the beautiful ringing sound of a pizzicato. So then you could work on trying to make them sound more similar. Are you in this kit? Does that make sense? Yeah. I'll figure out how to write notes after. Yeah, on that. Yeah. I've just written, listen for ringing uh. on pits and imitate on next exercise. And imitate the ringing on the next exercise. Which is kind of what is printed in the book where it says, with the bow play tones with the same resonance as the pits. Anyone more easy to understand English? <laughs> okay, and then you definitely want them to play an A major scale. They've done exploring the E string, they've done exploring the A string. You may have taught them an A major scale then, like pre-twinkle. That's completely fine, lots of people do. Um, if you haven't, this is your definite like reminder that you need them to just be able to play an A major scale and A major arpeggio. I put those into review, so they would play those as, you know, as if they're a little piece, the scale and the arpeggio. And then B and C we just do in the um, 
lesson by imitation and then they kind of don't keep reviewing them. I think it's not so important for them to have the whole set of A, B and C. So this would you probably photocopy this page, put it between Maison and then that's the next thing they've got to do and then do Maison. Before Maison? Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, your photocopy should just be the same order as the book, basically. Yeah. yeah. And then questions teachers and parents should ask every day. That is very easy to forget. <laughs> Are the students listening to the well, CD recording at home every day? Has the tone improved? Is the intonation correct? Has the proper playing posture been acquired? Is the bow being held correctly? So those are your basics for this early book one stage. Do you need to be loaded? Oh no, oh, we've nearly got it. Good. <laughs> okay, so we're going to stop there because it's half past 11. Um, so I hope that you now feel that you could write up your teaching points and book notes for all the way up to page 30. Mm -hmm. Yeah? yeah? Great. Okay, good. Should we go about it? Um.